What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Respectfully. I'm your host, Cam Farmer, and I got some very special guests with me today. These are my dudes. Uh, I've known them since, what, 10th grade chemistry, Coach Jordan's yes, class. Uh, I got my late. guy, Mr. Mr. Justin Brosmer, yes, who sir. is an award-winning journalist, photographer, and I got my guy, Mr. Demarie Harrison, who is going to who is in a not he's not an aspiring model he is a model and he's on top of being on top of that he's also an entrepreneur as well what's your, what's your brand called uh the uh, cheese bardo. bardo yeah yeah yeah. so um bardo is the name of his brand and you know before the end of the episode i'm gonna have them you know just promote promote their brands J justin is a award-winning uh, photographer and uh and a you know, journalist and and like I said, uh, cheese. This, we call him Cheese, but his real name is Demarie. What, what do you what do you prefer to be called, Cheese or Demarie? Uh, now that I've gotten out of high school, I prefer Demarie. But yeah. Demar okay, all right, yeah, all right, Demarie. Yeah, so Demarie, you know, he he's a model, experienced model. Um, he he's a, a you know an entrepreneur as well. So I'm beyond proud of these guys, man. These dudes have always kept it a buck with me uh, since since high school. I mean. Even we since we had sea lunch uh, at Grow Town, you know, we always Hell yeah. always arguing uh, about basketball. <laughs> so I'm very, very stoked, man, to, to have y'all on. So I appreciate y'all time. Right, thanks man. for having me, bro. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Of course, bro. Yeah. All right. So we before we get into the NBA, because I, I did I did mention that we talked a lot about basketball growing up. But before we get into the NBA, I kind of want to just, uh, you know, devote a few minutes to what you all have been doing um, post or not even like post high. Yeah. Post high school, but, but also in terms of, you know, your careers, you know uh, you know, what, what got you all like Justin, what got you into journalism? Uh, Demarie, what, what got you all in, 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 in model in modeling? Any one of y'all could go first. So, so whatever. No, I think I'll take the range real quick. <laughs> um, yeah, no, nah, I think me and cheese are definitely both like two, um, and I'm a, I've am always called him Cheese, but I just can't shake it. He knows, he knows. <laughs> but we're, we're two both, like, very creative people. We always have been. So even in high school, I think we both knew that whatever we were going to do, it was going to be based in, you know, our creativity. So we kind of had separate paths with it. But I knew I always wanted to talk about the things that I love to, you know, intake, whether it be sports, whether it be, you know, pop culture, movies, anything like that. I knew I wanted to talk about those things with like, you know, the respective communities and uh, and even for Cheese, you know, um, he's one of the most creative people I know when it comes to fashion sense, knowing the trends, everything like that. So I'm going to let him because it, it's hard to uh, advertise myself as a, a, a journalist because, you know, journalists don't really do that. But. If you do want to check out any of my work, my name is Justin Brosmer, uh, J-U-S-T-I-N-B-R-O-S-E-M-E-R. If you go to my first and last name dot com, you can check out my portfolio, my work based in Athens. If you ever need anything covered, just uh, come hit me up on my Instagram. But I'm going to go ahead and let Cheese talk about Bordeaux because it's going to be a really big brand coming up in the just December. We're probably going to have the first yeah. you know, shipment. So um, as far as like me getting into modeling, my mom and i would say it'll be like peer peer based as far as me getting into modeling my mom and my friends they always told me that i should give it a shot because of my quote-unquote good looks and stuff like that and i would say it's something that like stumbled up like fell into my lap really it wasn't something that i really pursued but once i did a couple fashion shows here in augusta and i started posting about them on my instagram more people that like I knew in Atlanta and stuff like that because modeling and fashion is pretty big in Atlanta. They started reaching out and they wanted me to do shows out there right. and it just been kind of have like a snowball effect. Like it's just been constantly going. But as far as like what's my next step with modeling, I've been trying to get signed with agencies and stuff like that and just seeing where it can take me because I wouldn't say it's my main pathway right now. I'm still focused on school. So I'm still taking my pre-nursing classes. I want to get into the pediatric field and stuff like that. But it's definitely something that I'm trying to, like, get established in even more. And then with Bardo, me and Justin, we've been 
kind of piggybacking off of each other because he's not as well as a journalist. He's also good at graphic design and stuff like that. So I've been working with him, coming up with ideas pretty much the whole year, I would say. We've been texting back and forth, sending ideas back and forth to each other. And we came up with Bardo. And it's pretty much it. the way that I spelt it. I didn't want to like copyright the actual word. Um, but it pretty much just means like a transition from like rebirth and death like that. Because I feel like continuous amount of times in my life to where like I transitioned from one state in my life to the next. So I wanted to put it on clothes and stuff like that. And if you follow me on Instagram, then you've seen the first idea that we came up with. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I, I saw it. Um, I, I was like, when I first saw it, I was like, dang, man, like my, and then when you, when you say Justin helped with, with the graphic design as well, I'm just thinking like, yeah, I try dang, to keep, like these, I try keeping every, I, not to cut you out. I try keeping everything like, no, you good in family. Like, I don't, I don't want to get too big or like get too big in the industry to where I don't forget where I came from. I'm always going to have him as like my business partner. Whether we take off or not, like, I'm just gonna, always going to know that he's always been there with me from step one. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I and I saw that firsthand. Um, you know, I, I really, because when I, when I initially saw the design and then when you're now, now you're telling me that yeah. Justin was involved in the, in the planning, I'm just like, I was just in this, I was just in chemistry with these dudes like <laughs> seven years ago, bro. And to see some of the people that we grew up with and, you know, doing their things. It's like, I'm like that, that, that ish makes me really, pr really proud, you know, because mm -hmm. in a world that completely writes off, uh, you know, people will say you got to go the traditional route and, you know, college and, and we've all, we are all doing that, but it's the yeah. way you handle it. And the fact that both of y'all have, exceeded expectations in your respective career pathways but also have aligned and not even just like in the business but also like y'all like you said Demarie, like y'all y'all didn't forget where y'all came from and 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 I, I i love that i i really do because that's part of the reason why i wanted to have people that i grew up with and who i admired um you know whether it's my high school or, or even my first four years of college yeah. on the pot on this podcast to showcase and to promote what y'all have going on. So, I mean, that, that, that is cool. So let me, let me ask y'all this. And I, and one of y'all, one of y'all can take the reins. Was it, were you all, were you all always business partners in a way like spanning back to high school and middle school, or was this just kind of, this kind of developed, you know, as, as, as the Mario, you know, became elevated. I would in say the career. business side came along after high school, but we always like car rides to school early in the morning or even on the way home or on the game and stuff like that. Like we always talked about building some type of like empire with each other. And the more that I got into the fashion industry and I seen other people like getting successful with their clothes, uh, he like instantly came to mind when I wanted to do a brand. I knew that he was getting started with his journalism and he was also like really good at graphic design. So I was like, why not just hit up my brother and we could take off from here together and like build something together. Right. Right. Yeah. No. And I definitely think it started from a place where like it started with friendship first. Like we weren't, you know, thinking about this stuff in high school. Right. But I think, um, you know, me and cheese are so close now that, we're going to be in our lives regardless of what's going on. So if it, whether it's me trying to do some, I know he's going to be right behind me supporting me. And that's the same thing. You know, it's not, it's not my brand at all. You know, I'm just there for him for whatever he needs, you know? So, so um, but man, you just giving me nostalgic with all this, but, uh, <laughs> but I also wanted to touch on like, you know, I always appreciate getting my horn tooted and uh, shout out to cheese too, but, I remember, you know, when you graduated from Kennesaw, bro, me and Cheese talked like mad times about yeah, bro, man, your resume. Cam resume, bro. Uh, this like drop down list, bro. Like, nah, yeah, like you really been. Yeah, we've been doing stuff together and, you know, building stepping stones, bro. You went out to Kennesaw by yourself 
got it out the mud, you know, and talking with the people. I know you was real down in touch with their, you know, sports department, their radio departments, everything like that. So, you know, they got to give credit to you, too. You know, even with this podcast, man, I mean, like, it's something I've like always wanted to do, but never had the guts to go out there and be like, all right, let's do this. You know, let's grind it out every single day, every single episode. Yeah, so bro. kudos I'm to you too, man. You, yeah. No, I, dude, I, that, that means a lot, bro. Reader's class. For sure. Talking me, you, and AJ, cracking jokes and stuff like that. Like you said, um, <laughs> sports talks at lunch and stuff like that. Like, I'm, I'm really proud of you, bro, going to two prestigious schools. And now you're at UGA, right? Yeah, bro, you're still doing your thing. I yeah. just want to say that yeah. you can really, you can really be something with your resume, bro. I just want you to keep going. Yeah, no, I, I, I appreciate that. I mean that, that keeps me going. I mean, obviously, I, I respect the both of y'all, you know. And, and one thing, like I said, one of the reasons why I did what I did, you know, when I left, Not I yet. left. It wasn't sure. easy leaving Augusta. It, it really mm. wasn't. You know what I mean? And There's a reason me and Cheese didn't. You know, yeah. like we stayed there at first. You know, it's yeah. not easy leaving your family yeah. and everything. It's it's not it, it's not easy. Um, you know, and and seeing like I said, like one of the reasons why I left was to, in a way, put Augusta on the map in a way because you know it's cool that we've we've kind of yeah. done it. You know, through yeah. sports, like it's, yeah. it's great. But I wanted to let people know that myself and and y'all and, and others who have graduated like we can still do it in other categories whether it be journalism whether it be modeling uh whether it be medical right the medical field you see edwin y'all y'all know edwin right edwin yeah, randall you know what absolutely. i mean like uh shout out to my that man edwin shout out to my, that man uh jalen uh uh yeah, you know i gotta shout sure. out all of them you know what i mean uh malik everybody like y'all and and i and i mentioned I mentioned Ed, Malik, and Jalen primarily because for Malik and Jalen, they were in our picture for uh, what do you call? It? Yeah, 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 for graduation yeah. and yeah. and the I museum. I don't know for for junior picture, year, yeah. we oh, took that. Man. Bro, yeah. that January yeah. field trip, bro, yeah. that was that, like the best field trip. That, we, well, Carowinds was nice too. I don't Carol, know. Carowinds was Carowinds nice, was you know, nice. but it but that it was rained. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's it's nah, up there though, no, for sure. But mm -hmm. but yeah, nah, like I re I mentioned those because I know how ambitious everybody is, you know, right. and I know right. how uh, uh 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 the the goals or the objectives that they set for themselves and for y'all selves, Edwin include like. Everybody, and it's not just it's not just like exclusive. This is include like I love seeing everybody do what they're doing, and the people that I graduate, y'all, we graduated with. It's like, hey man, a, a bat, a, a bat, and a, and a basketball and a football isn't yeah. the only. And it's good, it's good that you do that, you know, because you see others, you know, that we went to high school with doing that. But right. to 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 ex to expand on the different career fields that are out there, including sports and seeing the impact that we are making in our communities. You can't beat that, bro. So I, I love it. I, I, I see it. I see y'all, man. So I appreciate y'all for, for allowing me to, to, to be myself yeah. often, often, you know, authentically. And, 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 you know, hopefully I've done a good job of, yeah, of sure. al allowing y'all to do the same. So, um, but yeah, man, oh, that, I, I, I just wanted to ask y'all those questions so our viewers can, can know, can know who you all are. Um, and, and I'm gonna be completely honest with you. Every person that I have on this podcast, they hold significant value in my life. So this isn't a, uh, you know, oh, I just picked you all cause y'all were there, you know, like, nah, like I grew, I, I didn't, I didn't like Demarie, I didn't have the relationship with you that you have with Justin, but it feels like every time we talk and Justin the same way, like every time we yeah, talk like, is like, it's mad love. love. Like in and our always, that we built always, our high school, for sure. Like, genuine love is always there, bro. Yeah, no, ab absolutely. So I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, cause if I keep talking, man, I ain't gonna lie. I'm gonna get emotional, yeah. but uh, I want to, I want to kind of, I want to shift gears to the NBA. Uh, Where do we start? <sighs> 
I think that's an understatement, fam. I I ain't gonna hold you. I that's a that's an understatement. But obviously, you know, to kind of for our viewers who are living under a rock, who you know, metaphorically, uh, a lot of things happen. Damian Lillard with the Bucks, Chris Paul's with the Warriors, James Harden with the Clippers, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, Jordan Poole's with the Wizards now, um, and and. I really didn't have a specific question to ask you all. I kind of wanted your reactions of what's been happening so far, uh, because knowing you all both have, you know, a a deep passion for the game, you also have a deep knowledge of the game as well. And I, I guess my question to you all is, what has been your biggest takeaway? It could be from anything. It could be from the rookies. It could be from the veterans. Like, it could be from Luke. Like, anything. Like, what has been your biggest takeaway from from this season so far? And I one, would one of y'all can, say can go first. That Minnesota is probably the biggest dark horse this year so far. Just the way that you know they they keep losing in playoffs or they lose big like close clinching games during the regular seasons over the years. But I finally think that they're starting to get it, and that they're just starting to well like gel with each other. I think everybody is understanding their role from a uh, 10-plus year veteran in Mike Conley. We got, uh, I think Anthony Edwards is probably in his third or fourth year, but he's looking like he's looking like a superstar, Yeah, honestly. I honestly think he's looking like a superstar with his worth ethic. And this is overall aura on the court, like just the way that he carries himself. I think that that's a big factor in his game as well. And then Cat, they got Cat and Rudy down low and then, I honestly don't know how I don't know how Kyle Anderson still is successful with his game. Like, he's a big he's a, he's a big factor like in their, <laughs> Slow in their success. Like he really is. He understands right. his role. He doesn't try to do too much or do too little. Like and then I don't know who their coach is. I forgot who their coach is, but they're really like yeah, is it like Finch? I think yeah, really yeah well, Finch. Like coach Finch. Team, Chris Finch. Yeah. Are going to be a force to be reckoned with if they stay healthy. Yeah, yeah come in yeah. hot off that yeah, uh, Celtics perfect. game. I think that's they a great place Celtics. to start because that's Celtics like present on everyone's mind right now. That game, I want to say. And yeah, because they, they, yeah, go ahead, Cam. Yeah, you know, because they, I was yeah. gonna say because they lost, they lost to yeah. Minnesota, right? Yeah, Boston. Yeah, yeah, Boston. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They got Drew Holiday. In Boston, you know, they've had, like, seven yeah. of the best starting lineups, like, this year. The Celtics are great this year. They played great in that game, and I think that's what was the craziest thing about that Timberwolves game. You know, my girl, um, she's a big Timberwolves fan, so I feel like the Timberwolves, that's, like, the Warriors my first team, but the Timberwolves, I treat them like my second team. And I think a real challenge for them has been – you know, how to balance Cat and Ant because you got two number one overall picks, two offensive superstars. And Cat, you know, it seems like he's willing to take that role where he's going to be a little less, you know. And that four letter word that she's talking about that, or I mean, I'm not saying Ant is Michael Jordan, but have you ever seen him in the same room? That's what I'm saying. So, um, but no, I love the Timberwolves this year. And yeah. especially with how they're playing defense, you know, their lowest um, defensive like efficiency guy in their lineup in their like common rotation right now is Jaden McDaniels. And I can tell you that's cause he gets the hardest assignment every night. So if your worst defender is Jaden McDaniels, you're going to be a force <laughs> to be reckoned with for sure. And Cat's number two and guess who's number one? Go bear. Go bear. So it's like, yeah, they they playing with some with some passion early on. I every single time I watch the Clippers, <laughs> it's like I want to like gouge my eyes out because I got NBA TV, and and I'm getting and I'm getting to my point about about the Timberwolves in a second. Mm-hmm. Since James Harden has been traded, I'm gonna be real. I'm gonna give him ten. I'm gonna give him ten games. He played two. They lost two. I don't know why there are balloons up. I do not know why. <laughs> However, they played two. They lost two. So there's uh-huh. eight games left. Every time I watch the Clippers, 
and they they haven't won an away game at all this season. Minnesota yeah. is a really tough place to win at this season. I'm I don't mm. know why. I don't know how. Ant is playing MVP basketball. Mm. Go Bear, Certainly. defensive player of the year candidate. He is. He's known. Jo- as you can a put Jaden McDaniels in that category as well. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You you could put Jaden McDaniels in that category. But here's where here's where it gets tricky with the Timberwolves. Yeah. How long will it last? That's because that's the word. Takes. One injury. That's One injury. Takes. That's all it takes. Because if you think about it, I, Utah, Utah for a prime example. Last year, mm. Utah was on fire. Yeah. Utah had a great. Yeah. They had like Marks a great first team games of the season. They were like Jordan top Marks three in the West. Oh Marketing yeah, I remember that. Marketing. Uh, Walker. Yeah. Walker Kessler, he started. Lord, the, Lord, that was his like revenge uh, tour, the revenge tour, and everything. Yeah. Mm. I don't even think yeah. they ended up making the play in. No, they no who no they didn't. They didn't make the play in at yeah. all. So my thing is, and here's where the Clippers are involved. I am scared that the Timberwolves and other young teams, such as Oklahoma City who, in my personal opinion, nobody's talking about. Oklahoma City, New Orleans, I am worried that they have surpassed the Clippers. Now, I don't say this. I, I'm not saying the Clippers in terms of bias, because y'all know me. I, I'm a huge Kawhi Leonard fan. Everybody who knows me right. knows that. Cool. But I cannot look away from the fact that if Zion – and the Pelicans continue. Well, they got well CJ's out, but when yeah. CJ was in, they was playing great basketball. Mm. Minnesota is looking at, if they keep playing and they stay healthy, and Chris Finch making those proper adjustments, Minnesota could be a Denver's team to give well, Denver bro. a run for their money. What I. Yeah, bro. Like, Jokic is just that really guy. Special. I'm, I'm, know, I'm, man. It's just that I'm, they just I'm sorry. know how to play with each other. Like, yeah, they're a really well coached team. Like no, they got, they're a well coached team or does for sure. Too less. They know when to take the right shots and when not to take the right shots. Yeah. And they can just plug and play those role players who I swear yeah. I saw another like no name scooter yeah, bronze type guy lighting it up for them again. Like, they just, just turned like, those like guys out. Practice game when they're out there. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I thought Bruce. I thought I losing too. Bruce Brown was going to hurt them off the bench. I, I but... thought it was too. And yeah, and great. and they lost Jeff Green yeah. as well. Yeah. And a lot a lot of people don't give Jeff Green credit. Jeff Green. What do you say? What, what do you say, Demario? I think he is on the. I, I don't I know what team he's on. I hope he's out of the league. Honestly, that man so old. I think he is on the Rockets. I believe. <laughs> Oh, playing the Lake Show? Oh, you don't want to talk about the Lakers right now, my boy. Nah, hey, <laughs> hey fam. We... Yeah, yeah, no. Nah, we'll... Wait, 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 wait. One more thing on the Clippers, though, because yeah. I want to I wanna say my piece on the Clippers, too, because they, they're a mess right now, bro. I'm sorry to say. Because the worst thing about it to me is I feel like the team is set up to be better when one of the stars is injured. Yeah. And once you're there, you might be toast. Because... I feel like when they got PG, Kawhi, Harden, and Russ yeah. on the court at the same time, it's they just can't function like that. But you yeah. lose one of those guys, I feel like they would be playing some good basketball right now. But Harden, I just – I worry about Harden, man. Just watching his uh, – yeah, how he plays out there, fit. just careless with the, right the basketball. To go to. And, I think uh, he just wanted to be in L.A. for some – I don't know why he's so ha- – I mean – I don't know why he's so hell bent on wanting to be in LA instead of just mm-hmm. finding the right system that fits his game. I don't know what team he could possibly be on as far as that fits. His game. Go macro. His Go legacy. macro. Like what what's his legacy to you right now, Cheese? Yeah. Think you think he's like top seventy five and everything? Outburst and like how he was able to hold his own in the league when he was on the Rockets. But um yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
I mean, he's he, still he one of the best ISO be scorers we've ever yeah. seen. Yeah. You can't yeah. take that away from him. That he's just found the right system for him yet. I think he honestly should have stayed in Houston, uh, Philadelphia or Houston. And I think- in Philadelphia. And especially seeing how Philly playing now, you yeah. know Harden's thinking like, damn, like they're better without me almost because yeah. Maxi is taking that next step right before our eyes. Yeah. Maxi is a is a is an MVP candidate. I didn't know he could dish a rock like that. Oh I'm yeah. I'm impressed about about his passing ability for oh, sure. Uh, oh oh yeah. I, I think I think a lot of things that a lot of people take away yeah. from James Harden is the impact he had on Tyrese Maxi's game. I think when you have a veteran like James Harden, because he he's still James Harden, he's not the mm. the yeah, ISO score James hard. Harden, yeah, but he yeah. it's James Harden. So if you exactly exactly is so, anyone going to be surprised on a given night if Harden drops thirty three and eight? Like no one's surprised. No, him. nobody's like, surprised at that. But what I will say is when you have people like Tyrese Maxey who will drop yeah. twenty five and seven, I'm like, dang, Tyrese like. Yeah, I ain't know you had it like that. I mean, I knew. I mean, we knew he was a bucket. Like he could get a bucket, but like he hasn't even got his rookie extension yet. He hasn't so even gotten like, that yet. Exactly. He's so young. But but here's here's the th- and I'm glad you bring that up because here's the thing that I here's the issue that I have with rookie extensions. Mm. The issue that I have is that rookie extensions should be given for what you are projected to do. Yeah, not for one playoff appearance. That's the issue with Ben Simmons, and I, and I'm and we're we're we're, we're kind of getting off topic off of James Harden, but <laughs> that's the issue with Ben Simmons. Nobody's taking away his game. Obviously, mm. you know, before his injuries, before that collapse in the 2021 uh, semis against Atlanta, Ben Simmons, if if he had a shot, he really could be the second coming of LeBron James. You talk about a guy that can play make, a guy that can uh, uh, pass, the guy that can uh, – uh, it was a, a post, you know, interior, who's a threat on the interior. Yeah. Ben Simmons was no, – he was an all-star. Yeah. He was a – he. I was never mad when he when he got an all-star nod. But my, my thing is this. With Daryl Morey, I, I just want him to be careful. And I'm not saying that if Tyrese Maxey – has a great postseason oh, yeah, again, like he's had in the last two seasons. Yeah. Hey, yeah, hey, I mean, hey, at you least two hundred nowadays, right? At, at least two hundred, if you ask. But Jalen Brown getting three thirty. We don't uh, talk about that. Uh, we don't. We don't talk. I about don't know. That. I don't know. That was a crazy contract, but no, I definitely get where you're coming from. I, I think it's you know it's hard to tell. Yeah. The craziest thing to me is when you see guys like. Uh, You'll see, like, the I think I saw a stat like the best tight end in the league uh, was it? oh, Kelsey. Yeah. Um, he makes the same amount as Fred Van Vliet. So it's like that NBA money is just, it don't make sense, bro. It, so it doesn't. It um, doesn't. but no, nah, I would definitely say there's been a lot of overpays recently. And yeah. uh, I think even like in the NFL, you've been seeing, you know, like take the Nuggets, for example, you got one max guy. And then Murray, he's probably maxed too, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, after is. that, they got just, you know, like mid-level guys across the board. Yeah. They're just building a complete squad. So I think yeah. that's going to be really the new wave instead of trying to build all these super teams. Because even you see, like, the Clippers this year, yeah, but there's been, you know, go back to trying to put Russ on uh, the Lakers that year. Super teams, like, is really not going to work like that anymore, no. I don't. No, I, I don't think so at either. So I, I have a question. Um, you know, since since we're on the topic of, of Tyrese Maxey, what what do you all think or or how, how should I phrase this? What is do you think is his ceiling? I, personally, if you ask me. MVP. Most improved player. Oh. NBA champions. And oh. in my opinion. Play. In his Ooh, what that's hard. That he's what is his ceiling? If he keeps you go playing first, as well as he yeah. is, and he stays healthy and stuff like that, and him and Joe Well are still able to gel well with each other and stuff like that, I can honestly see him being a couple of first team, all team NBAs and stuff like that, and a couple of NBA um, 
All Star games. I don't know about another championship. I don't think. I don't. I don't think. I don't think they'll win. I don't think he'll win one in Philadelphia. Maybe if he <laughs> was to go somewhere else with a few more pieces to where he's able to be the man and carry. I think he'll be able to get one in like in a um, maybe in like an OKC setting or something like that. Maybe. Maybe something like that as far as him getting a championship, but I don't think he'll get it done in Philadelphia. I don't think so. I know you're good, bro. Not to yeah. not to cut you off, cheese, but who do you got uh coming yeah, it'll out? It'll probably be Boston this year. I don't think it'll be Milwaukee. Yeah, like Boston. Unless unless they're able to turn it around because they're still getting used to playing with each other and team and um Giannis are still figuring out who needs to have the ball when, yeah. who needs to take the shot, when and, uh, when and where. But I think it'll honestly be Boston if they're able to stay healthy. And um, Because Drew Holiday, I think he's a big like factor on teams. Like He's not the flashiest guard. He's not going to get you 30 every night, but he's going to defend the best guard out there, and he's still going to be able to get a bucket and facilitate and – tell people where they need to go on the court and stuff like that and slow down the tempo of the game if he needs to. And I, on that same note, too, though, and not to cut you off, Cam. No, 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 you good. You yeah. good. Um, Derek White, too, though. I wish Derek White was on my team. Like, whatever team I have, I want Derek White. I don't care if it's a football team. Like, that dude competes. And same thing with Porzingis, too. I've been real surprised with uh, his level of productivity um, this season. But I don't know if they'll come out, but you you go ahead, Cam. I, I, nah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who who do you have coming out the East? See, now you put me on the spot. But before the season, when I seen, <laughs> when I seen the, dra- the Dame trade happen, I think they'll figure it out, honestly. I think they'll figure it out. See, here's the issue that I have with – Yeah, I think if you – I do believe that it is Boston's to lose. Mm. However, however, the only reason why I say that is because before Boston had Drew Holiday, who, in my opinion, is the most underrated player in the NBA. Before they had before Boston had Drew and Drew was on, you know, he was at Portland at the time. Mm. uh, I was like, oh, oh, yeah. This is Milwaukee's to lose because Boston, Boston really can't handle. Like they don't have a true, not even a true point guard, but somebody that's a good game manager. He was able well, to lose Marcus the Smart the too. I trash Marcus Smart all the time, but yeah. you see, like even he was, sure. he was so high IQ guy, high high IQ guy, the defensive yeah. player of the year, obviously one of the top defensive guards in the league, and you mm. lose him, and and on top of that, they lost Robert. Uh, what's Williams, his name? Yeah. Robert Williams third. So it's mm-hmm. like, it's Porzingis. I was skeptical because I'm like right. Porzingis. Porzingis seven foot tall, seven foot three, and he really don't get rebound. You would think that a seven a seven plus foot guy would get rebounds. And it's Porzingis, weird. The same thing with Chet and Wemby too. Yeah, like, they'll get like eight boards, but they're not. You think they would grab them all? But yeah, nah, it's not like that. But they're not they're not like the Mitchell, the Mitchell Robinsons of, you know, of the NBA yeah. where you get 15 rebounds a game. So I, I, I think with Drew, here's yeah. where Drew makes them a contender. A. You have defense, you have defense, you have reliable scores, you have a first option, a second option, a third option and a fourth option. Even if it comes down to a fifth, your entire starting lineup yeah. are are are. They can take a game winning shot. You know what I mean? Mm. But here's where here's where it gets tricky because I've been I've been proven wrong before. I have That's seen Boston seen. succeed in the regular season so many times. And it, it exactly it and, and and they and their playoff hopes, with the exception or their championship hopes, with the exception of 2022 when they played Golden State, it has been thwarted. <laughs> by a sixth or seventh seed team by the name of the Miami Heat. And I am shocked that nobody has said, uh, I got, I, I low key got Miami coming out the East. You know what I'm no saying? Way. If no we be, way. If, I'm, if, if I'm being completely honest, a lot of these teams that are, who have losing records less than 10 games into the season, 
I'm not necessarily worried about. You're done. But one thing, the one thing about the Heat, I don't know how to do it, bro. they have, to... they always seem to get it done by the hand. <laughs> I I don't know how it happens. Exactly, same here. I don't know how it happens. I don't know how Jimmy Butler just decides to turn on a switch, and he was mocked because he came in with he was emo for uh what you call it for the the the, the media the day. Media yeah. day. And I and you know what I said? I said, "Hey, bro, yeah. you led your team to two of the last three NBA Finals. You can rock any hairstyle you want. Yeah. And the only really? reason why and the only reason why you didn't win the finals was because you weren't on the best teams. Very simple. Mm. You can rock mm. any One hairstyle you want. You could you could turn into Kawhi Leonard and his like cornrows. I don't have no problem with that. Sixes and sevens. I, it, he goes missing. He goes completely mm-hmm. missing." And I, I don't know if it's because he's overexerting himself in the first couple games yeah. to where he has mm-hmm. to feel like he has to do it all. But he that, that's for, that's one reason why they haven't won a championship yet with just Jimmy and that the supporting cast that he has is because he goes missing in those big games. I didn't have to, I didn't have them beat in Denver at all though. But I think I think it could have been a agree. better series than what it and was you- if he was able to perform like how he did earlier right. in the playoffs than he did um, in those closing games. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's the thing, right? I think no one denies Jimmy is like a bona fide yeah. Hall of Famer. And he deserves to be on that top 75 list. I can't even remember if he was on it, but he, he deserves wasn't. to be. Yeah, and I think that's going to be a change because – I'm not kidding when I say like that Buck series last year. That was one of the most like shocking things I had ever watched. Yeah, and he was playing out of his mind. That's one of the best probably playoff series like plainly I've ever seen like from a a, a player standpoint. But I get where Cheese is coming from too because I don't think he retires with a ring though. Like even this year, yeah. if they win, I think it's gonna be more based on the jump Tyler Harrow is making yeah. right now. Yeah. Then it's going to be because of what Jimmy's doing. Even though he's still going to be a great player, he's still going to produce in the playoffs. Somehow, some way, Miami will scratch their way to like, the playoffs. I mean, what did they like, do last they're year? They're Weren't they like in the play in? They were in the play in. Lost they, to Atlanta they all the way to and the then still made finals, it to the finals. They got all yeah. the way to the NBA finals. I, I, I agree. Yeah, I think. Cause they were, cause they lost to Atlanta. They were, they were the, I think they were the seventh seed, and they lost to Atlanta. So yeah. Atlanta got the seventh seed, and then they played the winner. Uh, they played Chicago for you know for the final spot. And mm-hmm. I think, and that it's kind of, and it's it's funny because I I kind of now you mentioned best playoff performances. What? Because I do believe Jimmy Butler's playoff his sole playoff performance that mm-hmm. year was honestly one of the the most yeah. productive like I have I, I don't think I've ever seen anything like it. But I will right. ask you all this. Like what what is your favorite playoff performance in you know spanning back to well, I would say 2010. It could be any year honestly, but to my recollection I only remember the NBA is like when Kobe won when Kobe won in what oh Oh, six. I think he won in six, right? Or, or, or I'm not tripping. No, that was San Antonio. Yeah. He he won in one of those years. Yeah. yeah. It was oh nine because Boston Boston won in oh eight, and then okay. and then you know they won oh nine. So yeah, it was oh nine. But what what name name a couple of of M, uh, NBA playoff performances well, that you were talking series be, or game? It, it could be, be series. Cleveland series. Okay, series. series. When. I feel when like back, yeah. Go ahead. Three to one. And yeah, I would say that's number one. I would say that's number one. No brainer. Oh, whatever. I mean, that's too easy. That's too easy, bro. Whatever. Get the obvious one out the way. Yeah. I I take stuff like specifically Game Five against the Celtics in 2022. Um, but I'm taking Clay. Um, Game Six and. I think it was, damn, 2016 now? 2016, Game 6 versus OKC? That's where Game 6 Clay started, bro. That's one of my favorite memories. The Warriors playing OKC Thunder, because you even bring up 
Um, I watched the regular that game season live. halftime I for Keeve with stuff. Y'all yeah. remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I yeah. love watching the Warriors against OKC, bro. <laughs> bro, that was crazy. That was crazy. I was in I was in the bed Saturday night getting ready for church. And then when next thing you know, we seeing how close the game is. And I see Steph, he coming up the left side with his right hand. He's right in front of the half court line. He he's that sh- I'm like, what? And, and then you hear Mike Breen, bang, bang, bang. And I'm like, oh, that this dude, it, him? That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. But, nah, but I'll give a, a Dame versus OKC as well when he when he had that heave against PG. I mean, Dame's had a, a lot of uh, playoff buzzer beaters yeah. that I've he watched has. live. Yeah, I think, for sure. I think the prior to Dame's – 2019 buzzer against OKC. I remember the one in 2014 when they played Houston, and that was yes. the, the Jeremy Lin off of the off of the off, play where off he the comes play the where three. he cut, oh, yeah, man, and bro. they set the screen for him, and he goes back, and he's like like that, and then he's yes, and the crowd, bro, like electric, bro, to be in the building that night, it must have been crazy. Man. I th- I think that was the first time they made the playoffs. That year, 2014, was the first time they made the playoffs since 2000. And that was like, I was like, dude, that's that's almost two decades, man. And then Dame literally just – and if we're being honest, I actually had Portland win in that series because you think that would a team with Dwight Howard, Mm -hmm. Jeremy Lin, Chandler Parsons, James Harden. Like, you know, they they get by an inexperienced team like Portland. But I'm going to be real. I I really think all – that their championship aspirations that year – really went to bed when when they came into contact with the Spurs. I'm not even gonna lie to you. And I I don't know if y'all remember I'll talk about another I'll talk about another game. Remember that game? It was it was I want to say it was 2013 NBA finals and it was like game three. It was Miami Heat, they were at San Antonio and Gary Neal and Danny Green was hitting like that whole three pointers back to back to back to back. They played really well. <laughs> they could not they, miss, bro. From regular like, season to playoffs, like they were a well oiled machine. But then that's why LeBron had to get the extra pieces, though. Yeah, I I, I I just remember seeing that stat. Yeah, they were like undefeated on the road that year or something. They were crazy. They yeah. were, and then on top of that. I think beating because they because the next year 2014 they beat OKC and this was like the number one team in the West. So I I guess I guess I my question oh and I and I have one more I have one more uh kind of throwback when Paul George dropped like 40 he dropped a 40 piece in Phoenix in that game five and everybody thought that they were you know Phoenix was going to win this is when Kawhi went out in 2021 and it was game five it was conference finals. And Paul George dropped like he dropped a forty piece, and I was like, if Kawhi was still healthy, they genuinely could have a ring. Because I'm gonna be real, no disrespect to Giannis and the Bucks that season, because they went on to win the championship. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't think the Bucks are beating that Clippers squad with the way Paul George and Kawhi Leonard were playing, and the way Ty Lue was making those adjustments in the Dallas series, in the Utah series, and more specifically in the Phoenix series. I'm I'm gonna be real. I I don't I think Kawhi Leonard, if he does not get injured, he has his third his third ring in two years. I think shoot Kawhi and Paul George, you know, they both um, are missing some hardware in yeah. their cabinet that they should have right now. Yeah, and uh, especially Paul George, he could have made a bunch of runs a bunch of times. I wanted to bring up those, and I don't think he was ever going to take down the Heat when he was with the Pacers. But yeah. those series, man, like watching those, you knew PG was going to be some serious in the uh, years to come. And even after coming um, back from that broken leg, I mean, that was one of the yeah. worst injuries I've ever seen. Um, so he's, he's, yeah, he's going to be in the rafters regardless, but it's going to be sad though, because yeah, he, uh, he definitely could achieve more. I think he'll go down like, mm-hmm. like a mellow or like a, I can't even say like an AI because AI made it to the finals. He led a yeah. team to the finals. Yeah. So he probably will go down like a mellow. And there's nothing yeah. wrong with that. I love mellow. But 
Um, I think like he's really one of the greatest players I've ever seen. Just yeah. being I, six he, eight he, and able people, to handle like, the ball talk like about that, his defense, shoot but from I don't anywhere think they on talk the court, about it enough. and like, defend, he is a and defend, really elite defender yeah. as well. Like he'd be taking some tough matchups and he'd be holding his own, and then going down on the offensive end and getting any type of bucket that he wants is, is pretty crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be hard, though. I don't know how they're going to figure out how the sequence of events goes in Clippers. Who gets first priority? Because it's got to be Kawhi, right? I mean, it's Kawhi Leonard. But after you go, because I feel like each of Harden, uh, Westbrook, and PG, they all think they're the second option. And only one of them is the real second option. You know what That's I mean? Paul so, George. Right, right. Yeah. Harden, I don't know, because it's like you want Russ. I feel like you want Russ to play that dominant yeah. point guard role. Yeah. But Harden has to thrive in that same role. So I don't really know how you figure that out. I, it's just it's just my my thing is, is like, and this is where I blame Adam Silver. Daniel Stern no, would never allow no, no, for Hall of Fame, like, caliber players who are still – yeah, like he would Daniel, be <laughs> no f- fact. Like it, it, it sucks because it's like I know Harden is a good player, but it's like you see Russ is happy. He's mm. visually happy, and mm. you got people over there. You know the Lakers yeah, who are trying to change his style of play. I and I saw this from a mile away. I was like, I'm gonna be real. This ain't gonna is. work. Like, because you got three. To be the man. At the end of the day, that's just that's just his mindset. Yeah. Like even though he's a premier guard, like he still wants to have the ball in his hands at all time. But so does LeBron. And yeah. you can't really argue with LeBron when it comes to that aspect. So I knew I knew it wasn't gonna work. Right. Right. Yeah, no, I, I agree. So I guess my my, my last question to to you all um is who wins it like who definitively like who is your definitive answer as to who wins Mm. it all it could be any team say the lakers clear cut like looking right now like i don't think denver has lost. yeah yeah yeah, this year like in the past three years like their last like reign i don't think they like if jamal murray continues to be healthy Michael Porter Jr. continues I mean, to be healthy, and like if they're still able to like keep their chemistry that they have, like I don't see them losing. I honestly, don't. Yeah, the more that I watch him, yeah. no, nah, that's and fast. Jokic is actually like watching him is like seeing an alien, game, bro. Because my like, my mind can't make slow, sense of it. Like, like he doesn't, it play doesn't like make the sense. average big man nowadays, where he's gonna like he can take you off the dribble, but he's he's not doing that every play. But the fact that he's able to pass, rebound, and get you thirty plus. No, he's not pretty much every no. night. Like it's it's crazy, and I don't think. Yeah, he's still still young. And the craziest thing is, like, he's 20. I think he's, like, 27, 28 or something. And he's probably already top 20 all the time. I mean, like, I mean, with with the MVPs, with the record-breaking stats he's put up, I mean, can you confidently say, like, Larry Bird was really better than this guy? Like, I don't know. I don't know. No. I mean, the best big man. I probably still have Hakeem over him. Yeah. But... Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I don't know. For sure. But I agree. It's Joker. It's Joker. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I'm gonna be completely honest. I know we talk about Boston a lot, and you know the Milwaukee, but I, yeah. I, I mean, I'm gonna be real. And and like you said, Demari, I, the more I watch, it's like I want to hate on them, but I can't because it's you can't hate on them because they because. Jamal Murray yes, and Carl, Nikola like Jokic big man, yeah. have the deadliest two-man game that I've seen since Kobe and Shaq. And here's the th- guard and big man. But here's the difference that separates yeah. Joker, Joker and Murray from Kobe and Shaq. It was all Joker can shoot from all three levels yeah. of the court. Yeah. Shaq couldn't do that. 
Shaq had a high percentage of field goal. Why? Set. It's all all layups and putbacks and everything. So when I see and the man and he is, makes his free throws. He makes his free throws. Yeah. On top on top of that, he gets everybody around him involved. Yeah. That's why you see people stuff, like Bruce saying, Brown, like they've, they've who I don't really like fault him for leaving to go to Indiana because Indiana's playing some pretty solid basketball at this point. Yeah. Yeah. They dropped yeah, like nah. they dropped Small like a hundred. Question and, too. Yeah. Um, if you're Sacramento right now, do you wish you kept on the Halliburton instead of Fox, or are you happy with Fox? No, I I'm happy. With, I think I'm I'm I happy. Think I'm happy about it, but Halliburton, yeah. he's looking he he's legit. really good. And really I good. I always I always knew Tyrese was legit. Like I ain't, I ain't gonna sit here and say he was a scrub, but it's like, can you you had two ball dominant guys? You know, they had Halib- to split up. They, they had, had to, to split, split up. up. Yeah. And and I'm gonna keep it a hundred. If they were to get if it's kind of like a Russell Westbrook and Harden from the OKC days, right? Mm-hmm. Even though even though Halliburton and Fox, you know, they weren't six men, they started at the same time. Mm-hmm. But you never know. Like De'Aaron Fox in the next few years is a perennial MVP candidate. He really should have been an MVP candidate just for how the fact that he led Sacramento to their first round to the to their first playoff series in like what over 10 years, 15 years almost. So it's like if you ask me, if I'm the general manager of Sacramento, I'm happy that Tyrese Halliburton's in 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 uh uh Indiana because both ball clubs are playing great. I mean, it's early in the season. The season hasn't been going on for almost a month, but they're playing they're playing great basketball. But I will say this about Sacramento. Sabonis, there are two things. Sabonis, his health. He, it's like, and I understand being he like gotta make his shots. At the three it's very simple. Yeah. Like, He's gotta work on that mid range to get it yeah. to where they have 20, to step up on him. Footers, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. To be able, like same thing with Ben Simmons. Like mm-hmm. nobody's asking him to shoot three, four plus. Three it's mental game, at that point. It's once mental. You get beneath the arc. Like I don't see why you wouldn't pull it. I don't understand why, especially if you're considered a NBA professional yeah. and you've been doing it pretty much your whole career since you picked up basketball. I don't understand right. like what really changed in like that mindset aspect. Whole career. Yeah. And just to uh, spin back on something, because I know we're probably going to wrap up soon. Yeah, no, no, but, you're good, man. Take your time. You're good. Yeah, but... um. No, nah, you were touching on it earlier, though, but especially when bringing up that King series, bringing up Halliburton, uh, you're seeing, like, the new guard in the NBA come up. And, like, watching that Sacramento series uh, last year, I was so happy the Warriors won, but I was like, damn, if this series happens again next year, I don't know what's going to happen because uh, that's how good these guys are getting. And when you said uh, De'Aaron Fox could be an yeah. MVP candidate, at first I was like, hold up. Like, that, that doesn't – compute in my brain but it's getting to that point it's getting to that point where it's going to be luca it's going to be like it's going to be a different regular suspects and like me and cheese you know uh being the bandwagon fans that we are yeah. warriors and Cavs, or not Cavs, lakers you know they're on the downswing and they're gonna have to grind as hard as ever just to like compete with those guys like okc like yeah, um, I the see Cavs the in the next, like probably I want to say, yeah, like these the young teams like are gonna uh, really take a step up this year. Together that they got yeah. and no, everything I, that they got going on, I could see them be taking like deep runs in the playoffs and possibly winning the championship just due to the fact that they all know how to play. I I consider them like a, a professional AAU team. That's what I look at them as because. I believe so. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I, I but. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, crazy. but like, wasn't Shea first team last year? Am I tripping? Yeah, Shea Shea I was think, first team. Like this dude is going to be regarded as like a top three point guard in the yeah. league. Hold on, let me let me let me see, because yeah, he because he, he I wouldn't be I'll tell you this like much I wouldn't be surprised like, that he was. Why he was a first I think because Steph first fell because of injuries because he only played like 58 games or something like that. Yeah. Now, I will say, my man's is a free throw merchant. 
you know, yeah. but he get he gets to the cup. I mean, like Shay is the real deal, yeah. definitely. Um, I, and I love Giddy. I lo- I think Chet's gonna be really good for him. Um, and Jalen Williams. When yeah. I was watching, uh, I think Jalen Williams. Then we then Warriors just play OKC. I think I was watching that, that game. I think it was it was last Friday because yeah. I think last Friday was the uh, the end the end season tournament. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah and it was uh, the buzzer beater, the which buzzer was beater. controversial by itself, yeah. but yeah. Um, watching Jalen Williams defend, man, that dude is a monster. He's a like, monster. I would hate yeah. to uh, for him to have the assignment on one of my guys. So yeah, yeah. Um, okay, she's so definitely gonna be good. No, I I agree. I think a lot of times, I think one of y'all pointed it out. We're really seeing these older teams. Huh. You I'm know, never gonna kind of, we're out. starting to see them on never. the down. You, you know, the downtrodden of their careers. That's not to say that they can't make yeah. noise in the West. Obviously, it what. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Never, never. LeBron count. is an alien. He's an actual he, alien. He, bro, you know, cause... the man, the man is. I, he's gonna be thirty nine in December, and he's, he's still averaging playing, thirty seven yeah. minutes a game. Thirty seven minutes. That but makes see, no sense. That, but that's indicative on Anthony Davis's performance. If Anthony Davis and Darvin and Darvin, but Anthony Davis, I cannot stress this enough. If Anthony Davis is the superstar or the, the the player that we all are because I'm going to be completely honest with you. Mm. And this may this may be an unpopular opinion. I do not think he is the superstar that we are yeah, that like we are visually games, yeah. wanting him to be. He will have yeah. a couple games during the season where he'll drop 30 like 10 games a row and then when he 30 and exactly he'll have 30 it's and 20 games, games like five games season. six games in a row. And then once that eighth game comes, he's injured. He's injured now. So it's like, you know, eight games exactly. But, you know, at the same time, he's exactly. And at the same time, I'm not going to sit here and say that, you know, he wants to be injured. Obviously, he wants to be out there. But when it matters, when it matters the most. I mean, Ron played through that injury last year. Ron, exactly. Ron played through that injury. But also at the same time, it's not just AD. I'm looking at the Austin Reeves. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at the Hachimoras. I'm looking yeah. at deloading. I'm looking at Where's uh, Vando. Vincent. Vando's injured. He got injured during like training yeah. camp. So all these guys that have gotten contract extinctions, they're being expected to produce. And you can't do that if you're not healthy. And you can't do that if you're inconsistent. Now, yeah. I may give Austin Reeves a little bit of leeway because the man just start he he was just playing in the Philippines for for FIBA, FIBA. and then like right. a, a two three weeks later he had to you know make that quick turnaround you know and, and play he's playing all eighty two games that's not easy to do a lot of people don't really understand that's mm-hmm. not easy not an easy thing to do but nope. when you got guys like Rui Hachimura nope. you got guys like the Gabe Vincent I'm gonna be completely honest Gabe Vincent yeah, is not really like, having the on course like season. Next- that we expected him to have. Like now, is that a coach like thing, though? Because that's if you're the Lakers right now, like, what are you thinking? Reason, are you really going to try a trade again, or are you going to try to switch like, it up in the coach? Five, yeah. yeah, we're eight. Go ahead. Let me let me give you a hypothetical real quick, Chief. Yeah, hey, honestly, would. if you yeah, could get. McDaniel's and, and uh, Cat and from the Timberwolves right now. But you're getting that from two different yes. people, and I honestly think that'll take yes. the load off LeBron from having to do what he did last night and start at the five. I don't know why. I don't know if Christian Wood started last night. I didn't watch the uh, start of the game, but um... I just I I don't understand like what the Lakers. Yeah. It feels like it should be obvious what yeah. you need because you have LeBron, who's yeah. can make almost anything work. You feel like you put shooters around him, you put defenders, three and D guys, and you need some rebounders, and that you're pretty much okay. good. But in the early part of the season, they were refusing to play him at point. It's like what are we doing here? And because I definitely don't believe in D'Lo. I don't. And 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 I'm not disrespecting D'Lo, but he was on a he was on a podcast episode with Patrick Beverly earlier during the summer. He said he feels like he deserves more money, and I'm like D'Lo, I appreciate you for, for you. 
that's what I'm saying. If you want to go like, hoop in Indiana, maybe that's, or something. maybe in Indiana, but not in the late. You got you are signed. Here's uh, <laughs> Rob Palinka is so. I'm happy that he signed the players that he did, but I'm thinking like, well, man, like you got Gabe Vincent and. He's coming off this, this stellar playoff performance. You got you were re-signing Austin Reeves. You were signing Rui Hodge. All these guys. Yeah, I think he's just you, there for you the also signed Jackson another, Hayes. Like, body. Jackson Hayes. Like, what exactly. Like, night, Jackson but, Hayes isn't even averaging down, 10, Bando, 10, 10 minutes a game. Jackson Hayes. And who who knows how long AD is out. So now that's the three. That's and on the topic of Palinka, though, could either of y'all tell me the last time the Lakers had a good draft pick that, like, yeah, for some got reason, quality uh, minutes? Max Christie's, like, because been so Max Christie, Scotty Pippen Jr., I like, I know they I, traded I, I, all their picks, so they're really, really only picking from he the second started, round. He started, like, the last couple but, of years, and he's, look, he's, like, the true definition of a rookie right now, as far as like, dude. Right. And I feel like you can miss on free agents or you can miss on draft picks. But if you do both, you should be fired. Like, you know, accidents happen, but come on. I will will say a good quality draft pick that the Lakers have had. I'm going to throw in Alex Caruso. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll take that. I'll take that. Yeah, I'll take that. But they didn't even re-sign him. I would love – the Lakers would love to have Alex Caruso right now. Yeah. What what were you gonna say, Demario? Yeah, uh, my uh, fault, bro. My no, fault. no, no, no. You're, no, you're good. I I was gonna say. I, here's why I say Alex Caruso. Mm-hmm. Alex Caruso was a good player off the bench, even when he started. He didn't average the most, but that's what the LeBrons and the AD. You know, you got other shooters around. Team that ever, like, like both at the time. LeBron's like you know, that's what good players are for. But LA. he gave he gave you good minutes off the bench, not to. I mean, if they would have, like, and that's where they messed it up, right? Because they had something there. They had what we were talking about where you got three and D guys. I mean, if I was the Lakers right now, I would be crying at night because I don't have KCP on my team anymore. Yeah. Seeing what he does for Denver, that man is lights out and plays great defense on a night in, night out basis. And they gave him up. Yeah, go ahead. ahead. No, 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 no. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, I was pretty much done. Oh, I was, I was gonna say like LeBron, you can you can you can attribute LeBron to that. I think when yeah. I don't know mm-hmm. if y'all remember that Phoenix game where I think they were down a few points and he pulls KCP to the side and he's like, "Casey, I need you to shoot." And from that moment, yeah. I'm like, and then when he got traded, you know, he got traded to uh, Denver. I was like, mm-hmm. ah, yeah, I ain't sure. gonna worry. Was, I mean, he, he, I, it probably will, but he ain't gonna be productive. Kentavious Caldwell defense. Pope was one of the most integral part of that championship team. Yeah, having Bruce Eight, Brown coming it, off the bench, like it was really nothing that you great could do about defense. It. Like, and sometimes no he was guarding the best life, players playoffs. on the other on the opposing team, and it's not just exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And, and going back to the bubble, too, on the topic of that being the Lakers' best squad, though, AD was also playing was. his best at that time. He was. Like, seeing him, he had a game winner in that Denver Western Conference Final Series. Yeah. That yeah. I think it was a three-pointer. Could yeah, either of y'all imagine that happening today? Like, no, nah, man. No. So, I, I really hope AD gets back to – because how old is AD? I don't think he's 30 yet. AD. I don't think he's 30 yet. I want to say he's – 28 okay. like or... he can still salvage like sa- salvage is the wrong word because the man's already won the title he's but that, he's, he, he's only 30 yeah his potential yeah, is still there like he can still thing, he's in his honestly, prime still as as, like, there's no reason why he's got to take a step back but maybe he is a, he's is a health think, thing that he really just can't shake i think I don't he's know. just falling some people like fall into that trap of like playing with lebron as far as like what they need yeah And that we can say that about KCP yep. too, because you know yeah, they say they when you leave LeBron, the I mean Super we see what Lonnie Walker is doing in Brooklyn right now. We see so, what Kyrie um, is doing as well. 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I haven't tuned in that much. Kevin Durant's been a little disappointing to me, honestly. Um, I just, go, ahead, go ahead. I just, I just want to say, uh, do y'all remember that interview that Devin Booker did? He was like, I just don't really see any team that could stop West us yeah. in the West. Yeah. I ain't even going to lie. John Morant 2.0 incoming. <laughs> nah, and and to touch on that too, I've been missing watching John Morant. Like, bro, when the elite, like, the, I don't think the Grizzlies gonna do nothing this year. But um, no. I've been definitely missing watching him play on a night in night out basis. And but, you, uh, no, go ahead. I'm sorry, Justin. No, I was I was, no, gonna, I, I was just gonna spin it back to the Suns because I wanted to touch back on that too. But, yeah, uh, yeah, go ahead, yeah. No, no, and to get, to get back to the Suns, yeah, no, I, I'm gonna be real. John Morant, two point incoming. Obviously, I, we have seen. You never want mm-hmm. to count out the teams in the West. If they if if you were in the East, that probably would have worked. But it's it's one thing to have confidence, but it's another thing oh. to be like, all right, bro, like. You you know you in the West, right? You you know there's still Denver, and, and mm-hmm. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be completely real. Phoenix has no bench. They, need to yeah. they have no bench. I mean, they, the Suns aren't that different than the Clippers. They're, they're little, really not. They're a little and bit better, know, like, but they're not that different. Like a, no. They're not because uh, one like injury name, like, look, right like now they're like struggling vital, because like, Book is injured. Yeah. Like, so being able to come off yeah. the bench and take control of the game and still being able to get buckets when he needs to. I think letting him go, I think he's like a league floater right mm-hmm. now. I don't think he has a job right now, but I think letting him go was a play. Okay, okay. But yeah, I think letting him go was pretty like pivotal and like in their success. No, he's a, uh, I seen that Jersey swap pick with Mikael. I think yeah. he was on the Bucks or he's something on the Bucks. like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah. their big man situation, though, because I think Durant is not in that type of mentality no more to play no. defense. And I've watched uh, yeah. Portland for a long time with Dame. I really like watching Dame and CJ back in the day. If you rely on Nurkic to bring you to the promised mm-hmm. land as your number one big man, he's going to let you down. He looks great right now. And he like he he's a baller, but he he's injury prone. But, like, I don't think that's going to work out for them long term. And I think they got, like, Jake Lehman as their other big man. So Jake Lehman? Who's the, who's the white dude on that uh, with the blonde hair on for their big man? Oh, you yeah, talking about Jock Landale? Yeah, it's yeah, like, him. him. He's not, he not on there anymore. He's with the, he with really? the Rockets. Yeah, he's with the Rockets now. Hey, the Rockets, they look they they tough, pretty nice. Bro. They he may nice. got them playing. He may got yeah. them playing. Yeah, they said he's out for like, like I I'm so yeah, happy Cam they're giving Thomas Cam Thomas ball, like a got, real like, chance, a lot of, bro, because like, he can really ball. He's injured though, spot. bro. Like, if they, like they could possibly be yeah. like an okay sprained ankle or something. Yeah, if they continue to like, if they continue to be successful. Yeah. I I agree. I think the yeah. best part, and this is what makes the season so dope, and I wanted y'all wanted y'all's perspectives on it, is because there's no clear winner, even with the contenders. Like, yeah. it's no clear winner. Like, if you want to be honest, like, even though Phoenix, yeah, Phoenix. they have you know no, KD, they, they have Phoenix. Book, mm-hmm. but they and they have Bill, but like, all three of those dudes are injury prone, and yeah, they have proven sure, yeah. to miss. Ex- Exactly, and their defensive liabilities. I'm gonna be real. Bradley Bill can't defend. Yeah, it's kind of easy. He's and not it, even gonna bother with that. This he's not even gonna career. bother with that. Like nah. it's it's he can't defend. Book he tries, yeah, but best he can't. He can't. And it's not defend. like they got a plethora of like three and D guys either. Like to, best, to, like, to go to, they're getting diced up on they are. on a nightly basis. Really like, they're gonna have to outscore everyone they beat. Exactly. What did, what did you say, Demario? Yeah. 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 Simple was let that let him walk. They ain't even trade him. They ain't. They, 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 they let him. They, 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 they let him. 
They let him. That's work. although he gets busy off the bench sometimes. He he has. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, he he. Yeah. Mm. And you can't rely on that like when you need it the most either. Yeah. So exactly, and that's that's the that's the scary part about it. Because and I'm not disrespecting Josh Okogie. I think he honestly is one of the best defenders on ball defenders in the league. But yeah. mm. at the same at yeah. the same time, you know, like. Who else is nah, Nurkic? Be, Nurkic yeah, is like, a rim protector. Like a that don't mean he's really a yeah. defender. Like, you can you know? stretch like, Nurkic he can block out shots, but like right by him he's not guarding the best player on the other team. He's guarding the he's. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. But. I'm I'm curious. I'm I'm really excited for this season. I mean, like I said, we're like what? We're like less than ten games into the season. So, yeah. Um, How have y'all been feeling about the uh, the tournament? Y'all like the format? Or I, what? in all honesty, at first I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know. I'm like, yo, <laughs> yeah. I was, <laughs> I'm like, yo, what? What's happening? I was confused I mean, yeah, that like it only like happens on Tuesdays and Fridays. Yeah, yeah. Like, 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 but like, the I saw the I saw the really OKC game, you see, like, and I'm like, dang, this is really like playoff series, basketball. All throughout the year, that prepares for the playoffs. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And I'm looking at Donovan Mitchell this year, too, because I got high expectations for that Cavs team. And I think Mitchell actually wants to get out of yeah. Cleveland. I think he wants to go to New York. But um, I think he does, too. Yeah. I think he but does, I, too. If they don't perform in the playoffs this year. Because I think he might stay. But um, I think Donovan is one of those really good, like, he loves basketball, yeah. right? Like yeah. every game reason, he's gonna show up for. So I'm excited to see him healthy. in the playoffs this year. I, I just, you know, it's obviously it's, uh, it's very unfortunate, especially with got, uh, you know they're, they they are injury prone. I, I will admit, mm. you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. in particular, they're gonna stay healthy. Exactly. Mm-hmm. It's still Mobley yeah. and Allen, but it's like with uh, Mobley. It feels like when Mobley came out the draft, he was like the highest upside prospect in that draft. Yeah, he you was. Know, him being so long, people were so curious about what he was going to do on the uh, defensive and the offensive side. But it really hasn't amounted to nothing. I don't know if that's because of the presence of uh, is it Jared, Jared Allen? Jared Allen. Yeah. yeah, I mean, and that Jared Allen's one of the best rim protectors in the league since yeah. the Nets days. But um, would it be worth it to? move off of Jared Allen just to unlock, see what you have with Evan Mobley before it comes time where he's going to need that rookie extension. Yeah. Cause you know, he's going to be asking for a bat. He, he, that's true. But I think mm-hmm. to your point, a lot of people thought he'd be Wimby before Wimby got here. Exactly. You know and what it's I mean? It's disappointing seeing the lack yeah. of offensive and output. For sure. yeah. It, yeah, it is very. I mean, the, on the like defensive the output, game, yeah, sure, he like can block shots. You know, that's, that's cool, like but you know, like not everybody is watching the game like for now, defense. We, who you going? Big man, who going to dunk? Like you're not. You got to move out from the post. Like you got to be able to shoot the open jump shot. Like with Brook Lopez, like I respect Brook Lopez's game. Like he can he can get you in the post, and he's able to stretch you out and knock down the open three if he needs to. And not right. not a lot of like new big men are able to do that nowadays. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I yeah. I agree, and I think that's one that's one thing I'm trying to learn. You know, especially still watching the game, is like how how can I watch the intangible stuff while watching mm-hmm. everything that is clearly going on, you know, in my face. So I feel like I've done a really good job of of kind of developing that mindset. But but yeah, I, and I, my la- my last question uh, to you all is. Um, what yeah. like what advice you know you do you all have for those you know coming behind you who are aspiring you know um, into a career for their choice but they just don't know how to up, to be honest look or or, or start wisely. really how do you, like what advice do you have like, for for I've those type of people been the low like low voice like not being like comfortable with asking questions and asking for help and stuff like that but the more that I've reached out to people in my 
career choice, like pathways, like it's helped me a lot. Like it's helped me grow as whether I'm asking a model, like what can I do to get better? Like what can I do to be seen by this agency or what can I do to get in this type of show? Or if I'm talking about nursing, as far as like talking to Edwin or Jalen or just anybody around campus, like what can I do to be successful? Or like where you're at in your point of your career, like what can I do to become like a better of myself? And um, yeah, just never give up, bro. Cause like uh, after high school, like I've been through like some life things to where like I had to take a semester off from school and it kind of like messed up my, um, as far as like me graduating, like what my class and stuff like that, like just never give up and just know that like life doesn't get any better. I mean, no, life gets better but it doesn't slow down for nobody. It it really doesn't. Like, you just got to keep persevering and you just got to be able to wake up every day, like with the same attitude and just keep moving forward. (laughs) Yeah. 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 No, I think, you know, going off that same, same vibe, um, you know, make sure you have a strong support system because we all need that, right? Um, just like Cheese was saying, don't be scared to ask for questions or get help when you need it because there's everyone needs it. You know what I'm saying? So reach right. out to those friends that you have or those family members that you have and talk with them. You know, even if you don't have nothing to say, just yeah. know, uh, just maintain those connections because especially leaving high school, you realize how little connections you actually have that are going to stay strong outside of that. And those are the ones you need to really treasure. But moving on to um, advice for like people that want to do stuff with their life, because no matter what you want to do, you can do anything. But if you were asking for my advice, do something creative. I think creativity Mm -hmm. is like the lifeblood of the world. Right. Um, And I'm sitting with two other, you know, extremely creative people. Um, so look, look at like within yourself and it's hard to do because, um, especially leaving high school, I didn't know what the hell, you know, part, I don't even know that that's not even really <laughs> straight, a customer, man. but straight, uh, <laughs> I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life though. And, um, it was hard. I was like, man, I'm in college. I know I want to graduate. I know I want to get a good job. I know I want to be happy. I know I want all these things, but I didn't know, uh, how to get it. And I didn't think, you know, like people say, follow your dreams or um, like Jesus was saying, never give up. But it truly is like when you become an adult, you realize you can have a goal and it can seem pretty unattainable. But if you wake up day in and day out and work toward that, um, you can make really whatever you want to happen to your life. You can make that a reality. And so it is a mix of like Jesus was saying, never give up, but also stay in tune with, uh, stay in tune with yourself. Take a look in the mirror uh make sure you're keeping tabs of where you're trying to go and also stay disciplined and that's like a hard thing in life staying disciplined and uh that's why like i appreciate what you do cam so much because you know since you started this thing you ain't turned your back on it so uh first figure out what you want to do and then pour your all into it and something good will come out of that so that's what i would say no, nah, I mean, that's that's love, man. I mean, I think one of the things that I, I heard both of y'all say was really just stay disciplined, you know, don't give yeah. up. I think there's beauty when you do something that you don't feel like doing. It's one thing to to have a passion for something and you not feel like doing it as opposed to not doing it at all. So, I mean, I, 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 I'm trying to, you know, learn as much as I can. And that's why I'm, I've always kind of taken after you all, because mm-hmm. even before you all, you know, became submerged in your career fields, y'all were already creative. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like y'all were very creative people in the classroom. So, you know, I, I, I don't I don't take that lightly. And, you know, I I must still keep doing what I'm doing. And yes, I want y'all to still keep doing what y'all's doing. Y'all doing it as well. And y'all y'all both have my number. So yeah. if there's anything and y'all are more than welcome on the show yeah. anytime, yeah, we got to do this again. We got to do this bro. again. It was, it was you fun. know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm going to be in, I'm going to be in touch with y'all, uh, you know, about some things in the future. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm still kind of trying to 
plan things out, you know. Yeah, no that worries, nature. So bro. I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna hit y'all up soon. Um, but yeah, like I said, y'all have my number. Y'all are more than welcome on the show anytime. And on top of that, yeah, for sure. you know, outside of Likewise. me being a student and all this, I'm I'm your friend, you know, and y'all got a friend in me. So if there's ever anything y'all need, like if I y'all 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 know how I'm rocking with y'all for sure. So for sure. For sure. Yeah, likewise, mutual yeah. as hell. Yeah, so, likewise, uh, likewise, likewise, for sure. Well, all right, all right boys, have a good night. Hell likewise. yeah. Likewise, likewise, y'all have a good night, and I'll talk right. to y'all soon, and I'll be in touch for sure. Thank you all for tuning in to this episode of Respectfully. I'm your host, Cam Farmer, along with my boys, my brothers, Mr. Justin Brosmer and Mr. Demarie Harrison. That is the end of this episode. I'll be back soon. God bless y'all. Love. All right, love. Peace love. out. All right, man.